Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. We're talking about the process that R. Kelly is going through right now relating to his New York sentencing date. So um, it's still scheduled before the singer's upcoming Illinois trial. Now, this is an excerpt from the Law and Crime uh, Criminal Justice Position here uh, on May 21st, 2022 at 6.33 p.m. So a federal judge on Saturday agreed to push back a sentencing hearing for R&B star R. Kelly, known to the court system by his legal name, Robert Sylvester Kelly, on racketeering child exploitation and other charges. The move came as defense attorney Jennifer Bonjean promised to present evidence that Kelly's attorney, um, the original attorney, botched his case. So a Brooklyn jury on September 27, 2021, found Kelly guilty on all the charges levied, but found that prosecutors did not prove three specific accusations involving one specific victim. Kelly has moved for a judgment of acquittal, a new trial, and has objected to a pre-sentence investigation report. He also has moved for more time to file a supplemental sentencing submission upon receipt of experts of expert reports from defendants' mitigation experts, expected to be received on June 9, 2022, according to a May 19th letter to the court from attorney Bonjean. That letter continued by noting Bonjean's late connection with the case, which she said positioned her to criticize the efforts of the previous counsels. The lateness of the mitigation expert reports, according to Bonjean, is because some were unwilling to take on the notorious case. COVID-19 lockdowns made it virtually impossible to communicate or share documents with her incarcerated client, Bonjean wrote, and that resulted in further delay. Furthermore, jailers are said in the letter to have dragged their feet in the setting up meetings between the experts and Kelly himself. Bonjean also bemoaned Mr. Kelly's literacy challenges in discussing detailed legal documents over Zoom, documents he could not read prior to his meetings with his attorney. Bonjean further said it was unfair to sentence Kelly in the Eastern District of New York while another trial was pending against him in Illinois. But the judge previously expressed a desire to keep sentencing on track in New York. Kelly is entitled to competent representation at sentencing, which includes presenting evidence of mitigation, Bonjean wrote. Whatever can be said about prior counsel, undersigned counsel has worked around the clock to ensure that defendant receives constitutionally mandated effective assistance of counsel. Bonjean then requested to move the deadline for expert reports to June 13th. She then asked to push sentencing back by a week or at least a few days. Federal prosecutors agreed to the delays she noted. U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly agreed via a Saturday order. The existing deadlines for the party sentencing submissions will not be extended except the defense is permitted to file its supplement by June 13, 2022. Judge Donnelly wrote, the sentencing hearing currently set for June 15, 2022 is adjourned to June 29, 2022 at 1030 a.m. No further adjourn adjournments will be granted. The June 29th date is still before Kelly's trial in U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Illinois is scheduled to commence August 1st. So I'm going to read to you the letter that Bonjean wrote to Judge Ann Donnelly. And I really don't understand why the sentencing must go before the Illinois trial. Um, I do believe that it is to put something in stone so that Things that come out in the Illinois trial will not taint 
the, the attainable <laughs> lies and deception and motivation of those who were trying to take Robert Sylvester Kelly down. So I think this is a universal input that, you know, he's going to be okay. Their lies are coming home to roost <laughs> right in their own backyard. So the sentencing will not be able to go forth before the trial. It just makes no sense. However, if the sentencing does go forth before the, the trial, it will lag itself to create the appeal. That's it. That's it. She's trying to tie her hands so she can't acquit, so she can't create a new trial because with sentencing, it's already done. So I think that's the reason why she's moving so fast to get that sentencing done before anything else could pop off that we see very vivid and clearly that his constitutional rights has been violated. What are your thoughts? So now we're going to read the letter that has come forth, filed 5-19-2022 from the Bonjean Law Group to the Honorable Ann Donnelly, United States District Court Judge, United States District Court, Eastern District of New York, 225 Catman Plaza East, Brooklyn, New York, 11201 regarding United States versus Kelly, 19 CR 286. And the letter writes, Dear Judge Donnelly, I write respectfully to request leave to file a supplemental sentencing submission upon receipt of expert reports from defendants mitigation experts expected to be received June 9, 2022. The government does not object to a supplemental submission if defendant cannot obtain the reports prior to May 26, 2022, which he cannot. The timeline is way too close. Alternatively, defendant seeks an extension until June 13, 2022, which is not unreasonable, in which to file his sentencing submission and requests that the sentencing hearing be pushed back by a week or even a few days. The government has expressed its desire to keep the sentencing date on June 15, 2022. Defendant's preference is to adjourn the due date for sentencing submission and the sentencing hearing date by one week, which will be June 22nd. But we'll take what he can get. So right now, the, the conversation of the letter is saying, this is unreasonable. This is unreasonable for my client. I have too much information to digest. I have too many expert uh, uh, requests that are sent out that are not coming back in enough time in order for me to do what I need to do to, to legally prepare my client for what he's facing. She further writes, by way of background, the undersigned counsel was retained by the defendant to write the post-trial motions. So she were already, you know, looking at appeals processing, assist at sentencing, and to represent him in the second circuit. So she was moving to the next level beyond Ann Donnelly. She filed her appearance in this case, October 29th. 2022, to be clear, the undersigned counsel was not retained to undertake defendant's entire post-trial defense and sentencing representation. However, she's strong enough to keep going because after reading the voluminous, it's a lot, all of the recordings in this case and drafting a post-trial motion, it became clear that the undersigned counsel would have to raise ineffective assistance of counsel, meaning that his attorneys did not do their part, claiming that placed other members of his trial team in a conflicted position. The undersigned counsel first apprised the court of this development in a letter dated February 1st, 2022, on the docket number 264. 
In and around that time, defendant's trial team withdrew. Before moving to withdraw, defendant's attorneys had not retained any mitigation experts or completed any mitigation investigation as best, best as defendant can tell. So moving on to footnote number one. It should be noted that until early February, it was virtually impossible to communicate or meet with defendant. The Bureau of Prisons was first on a pandemic-related lockdown and then went on a nationwide security-related lockdown in January. During this time, it was extraordinarily difficult to secure Zoom meetings, which were in high demand, under, unreliable, and invariably canceled or changed without notice. On the few occasions counsel was able to meet with defendant by Zoom, the meetings did not allow for meaningful consultation. It was impossible to hear one another or share documents. These meetings were particularly difficult given Mr. Kelly's literacy challenges. Wow. What are your thoughts on that? It's like they use the pandemic to abuse time frames and then through ridiculous time timelines that has to be motion filed and recorded on a document such as a case docket. It, this is really showing that the criminal justice system is just doing whatever they want. Without getting into unnecessarily and privileged details, undersigned counsel diligently began preparing for sentencing in various ways during and after the completion of the post-trial motions, including exploring retaining mitigation experts, as this court already knows, undersigned counsel sought a continuation of sentencing until after defendant's August 1st, 2022, Northern District of Illinois trial out of concern that defendant would have to choose between competing constitutional rights. This court denied that motion on April 5th, 2022 and defendant's subsequent motion for reconsideration docket number 289. So all of the concepts and the ideas that made sense to, you know, at least help the defendant, Robert Sylvester Kelly, to come up for air was not allowed. The undersigned counsel began consulting and interviewing mitigation experts in March in the event this court denied his request for a longer adjournment. So she was preparing herself for the inevitable, which it did happen. This task was exceedingly difficult given the complexity of this case. The dearth of experts willing or able to take on this case and the short time schedule on which an expert would need to work. Undersigned counsel did, did retain a mitigation expert in mid-April and promptly sought approvals from the Metropolitan Detention Center on an expedited basis to allow face-to-face -face meetings with the defendant. Indeed, defendant's experts were prepared to conduct their examination of defendant the last week of April, which would have allowed plenty of time for preparation of their reports prior to the sentencing submission deadline. But the MDC was adamant that there was no way to expedite the approval process. The experts were not approved until May 13th, 2022. Bending over backwards to accommodate this short timeline, the experts cleared their schedules and made prompt travel arrangements to meet with defendant today and have scheduled visits next, week's, next week on May 24th and May 25th. Reluctantly, they have agreed to submit their report by June 9th, 2022, but they cannot move at any faster pace. So she's being honest. She's being, you know, consciously aware of what they could possibly do. And it just seems that 
She's fighting so much. Attorney Bonjean, you're you're doing it. You're doing the damn thing. So you keep it up, girl. You keep it up because you got it going on. And I'm going to send this to you to let you hear what the lives are saying relating to this motion. I already talked to them about what a motion was about, um, how you use that as a tool to at least put something on a docket. So, you know, it's like playing tennis. You throw the tennis ball over to the other side. It's up to the other side to throw it back. Sometimes, you know, it don't run real smooth, but this motion is a tool that can be used to support what Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly has been facing. So back to the letter. In light of the foregoing undersigned counsel, reached out to the government to explain the dilemma and determine whether they would object to a short adjournment of sentencing or if they could at least agree to a supplemental sentencing submission in advance of the June 15th, 2022 sentencing date. AUSA Guides, Asu Guides, Asa Guides, stated that they would like to keep the June 15, 2022 sentencing date and strongly suggest that the expert expedite his or her report, a reasonable request given that he or she was retained with the understanding of the firmly set sentencing date to the extent that the expert cannot complete the report by the time your submission is due. We do not object to your making a supplemental submission in advance of the sentencing date. So she's saying, we're willing to work with you, but please work with us. This is a man's life you're talking about. This is a life sentence that you're about to set down. So how could you be so unreasonable? The undersigned counsel appreciates the government's courtesies, but wants to point out that while the experts were retaining with a clear understanding of the firm set sentencing date, and prioritized this case to meet that deadline, the MDC did not approve them for visits until May 13th, 2022. The experts have already expedited their process as best they can. They are not local and could not have even made travel arrangements until the approvals came through. Once the approvals were made, the experts acted with Alacrity, 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 whatever that word is. But they simply cannot have a report completed by May 26, 2022, if they cannot complete their visits with defendant until May 25th, 22. They have, however, agreed to complete the report by June 9th, 2022. Now here is footnote number two. Since He was unable to read documents prior to the meetings. Regular face-to-face visits did not resume until February 10th, 2022. So we go back. No, this is footnote number one. It's the extension. So I'm going to read that whole footnote. It should be noted that until early February, it was virtually impossible to communicate or meet with defendant. The Bureau of Prisons was first on a pandemic-related lockdown and then went on a national-wide Security-related lockdown in January. During this time, it was extraordinarily difficult to secure Zoom meetings, which were in high demand, unreliable, and invariably canceled or changed without notice. On the few occasions counsel was able to meet with defendant by Zoom, the meetings did not allow for meaningful consultation. It was impossible to hear one another or share documentations. These meetings were particularly difficult given Mr. Kelly's literacy challenges. Since he was unable to read documents before the meetings, regular face-to-face visits did not resume until February 10th, 2022. So the defendant is facing guidelines range of life. The PSR reflects the complexity of the sentencing issues at play in this case. Defendant is entitled to competent representation at sentencing, which includes presenting evidence of mitigation. Whatever can be said about prior counsel, undersigned counsel has worked around the clock to ensure that defendant receives constitutionally mandated effective assistance of counsel. 
Accordingly, defendant respectfully requests that this court enter an order granting defendant until June 13, 2022, in which to file a single sentence submission and to adjourn the sentencing hearing by a week or at least a few days. Footnote 2. Undersigned counsel prefers a short continuance of the hearing also because she is on trial in Los Angeles starting May 23rd, 2022, which with opening statements scheduled to commence on June 1st, 2022. Although the trial is a short one and the state court judge feels strongly that it will be concluded before June 15th, 2022, it will be closed. Undersigned counsel was committed to this trial date long before she filed her appearance in this matter and long before the scope of her representation in this case expanded. So she's being as honest and as open with her schedule as she can. And I know that even murderers have literally gotten, you know, motions granted under circumstances way less than this. And right now, this timeline is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So alternatively, defendant seeks an order allowing defendant to submit a supplemental sentencing submission no later than June 13th, 2022. The government can apparently live with this solution. Respectfully submitted, Jennifer Bonjean, CC to AUSA Elizabeth Guides. Maria Melendez and Nadia Shahada. So the thing that I feel that we need to work on as Kelly Nation is to continue to pay attention to the motions, which are the tools that expedites and pushes information through the system that is totally clogged and Pay attention to the reasonings behind the motions. What are the reasons that the motions are being denied? What's going on in the world at the time? What legal laws are being granted and denied at that particular time? Because Hollywood and, and the court system, they truly communicate subconsciously through the wordings and the way things go down um, in the court system. And, and in movies, we see it every day, sub, subliminal messaging. So <clears throat> this is not a difficult timeline. She's not asking for one year. She's not asking for many, many continuances that don't make sense. She's just asking that her counsel be given this information, um, this opportunity. You know, now I think, let's see here. Now I'm going to finalize this segment with um, the rebuttal um, and explanation to the motion that was filed. So a federal judge in New York on Friday granted a two week delay in sentencing for R. Kelly after his lawyer said experts she'd hired had been unable to get access to the singer in a federal lockup in Brooklyn. There is no way that a sentencing should go forth without being able to at least do what we need to do in order to protect the constitutional rights of Robert Sylvester Kelly. And if there is documentation stating that the MDC had no access to getting uh, the experts into the prison until a certain time, then that judgment of motion should be filed in relationship to that timeline. Donnelly knows what is actually going on. And this is going down in history because we're watching it. We're seeing it. And I am not the only one. Nobody can shut everybody's mouth at any given moment on this situation. This is really happening in real time. United States of America, freedom life. It's happening. So the U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly decides to move Kelly's sentencing hearing from June 15th to June 29th. Why does she do that? She knows that she has to do it. That had to be granted because there is no other way that this court case sentencing would go on without it, even though it's probably going to be appealed anyway. But it's just amazing how much fight 
attorney Jennifer Bonjean has to go through in order to get her voice heard through the only tool that attorneys and prosecutors and judges use, which is a motion filing. But she writes also in the same order, U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly moved Kelly's sentencing hearing from June 15th to the 29th, writing in her order that it would be the last time she granted a change. Why? Why is it the last time when you know things are going, this timeline is unreasonable? The hearing had originally been set for May 4th. Things happen, especially when you can't allow experts in either on a Zoom conference. How easy could it be to give him a, 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 a video camera and a computer and have him sit in a room to be investigated as far as his mental health or his, you know, disabilities or anything like that, that could support him in his sentencing. The final draft of the information that can be included is being unable to be presented. Wow. The latest delay came after Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, wrote in the motion that her sentencing mitigation experts would not be able to interview Kelly in jail until May 26th at the earliest due to delays in approval by the U.S. Bureau of Prisons. So she sees statistically that this cannot go forth. Why? Because it's un they're unable to get into the prison. So you're going to tell me that you're going to prevent this man from being able to have his mitigation experts communicate with him in order to help assist him in, you know, the information that wasn't allowed in just so they can have it for the appeal. If anything, wow, their report will not be completed until June 9th. Bonjean said Kelly is entitled to competent representation at sentencing, which includes presenting evidence of mitigation. Kelly 55 is eligible for anywhere from 10 years to life in prison after being convicted September 27th. And U.S. District Court in Brooklyn on racketeering conspiracy charges alleging he used his music career to further a criminal enterprise. How dare them? How dare them? How dare them? How dare this system do this? How dare the, this system do this to a young man that knew nothing about a criminal justice system coming from the streets of Chicago? At the age of 21, 22, 23, 24, you know, 25, 26, 27, come on. This is what's happening. This is what's happening to our culture, to our African-American men. We are mothers first. And I feel the pain of Robert Sylvester Kelly as I feel and felt the pain of the murder of my own son. And I say to you that it is the same pain because incarceration is the next physical thing to a prolonged, consistent death. Every day you wake up in the same state of being unable to help yourself, unable to feed yourself, deciding where you want to go. You are being incarcerated mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. All that's happening. All that's going on. And it frustrates me. It frustrates me that another person has to control the life and time of someone who was accused and criminally railroaded, railroaded in order to what? Make money for the criminal justice system to pay that 68% of federal uh, uh, staff members. And to really, really show that, you know, this is a Hollywood opportunity. People are not going to commit crimes in order to go in there to be near R. Kelly. 
This is not the first time. Thank God for unique thoughts for, you know, um, letting me know when I did the, um, Mike Tyson video interview that, um, he wasn't the first uh, Chuck Berry was not the first to be, you know, incarcerated on the man act. Jack Johnson, a boxer because he married a white woman. And you need to go check her channel out. Unique thought. And, and it's amazing how <laughs> this stuff happens. I think that was in 1949 or 44. I'm not sure. But I know I did some. Um, I, I, I glanced at that when I was putting my research together. A jury trial in that case is scheduled. And the cook count the he's also accused. Okay, so back to R. Kelly. I'm sorry. I'm I'm really frustrated right now. Um, he's also accused in federal court in Chicago of conspiring with uh two associates to rig his 2008 child pornography case in Cook County and hide years of alleged sexual abuse on young girls. A jury trial in that case is scheduled to kick off. Kick off. Listen to the terminology that they use in this article. A jury trial in that case is scheduled to kick off on August 1st. That's like a football game. The kickoff, the pre the, the preseason pump up. This is a man's life. And I've been there. I've been through the incarceration system. And it's nothing to play with. When you're on trial and you're sitting in that courtroom and you are the one that everybody is looking at and you're, you're pleading for your innocence, you're telling them you're not guilty. You're telling them that things have happened in the situation based upon the circumstances that says that if you look deeper, if you look deeper than the number, statistically, I my body will bring for the incarceration system, you're going to find the truth. What are your thoughts? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really angry. The lateness, the lateness. How many people who are not R. Kelly is sitting incarcerated right now because they don't have all the eyes on their case? That's sitting there for life because of a timeline that is unable to be met. You answer that. You answer that. And I'm going to go meditate. And I'm going to go clear my mind. I'm going to go listen to some relaxation music. And take me a therapeutic. Bath. And just let the world go right now. Because it's about me. It's about me and my life that I have to live beyond this video here. And the boiling blood is pumping. It's pumping because I see too many of our cultural masculine energies going down a pipeline for nothing. Why can't we make $66,000 a year in a, in a job that we can go to every day that pays IRAs, that pays, you know, compensation for our health benefits and relieves our stress to where we can go on vacation. Why can't we make a $66,000 a year job instead of being put in a system of incarceration to make $66,000 for someone else in a year? Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. Remember, May 29th is our live. I'm going to do a first live ever on this channel. And um, as always, keep it 100. We'll see you next time.